Okay, so uh, welcome to the latest careers interview blog. Um, today I'm joined by Jamie Lee Wayman, um, who's going to tell me a little bit about her career so far in the additive manufacturing industry. Uh, so Jamie, um, nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, what I'd just like to know, first of all, to start off with is a little bit about yourself. What, what do you do? Um, what industry do you work in? Um, and, and what do you do as, as part of that? Yeah, um, thank you for having me as well. Um, I use 3D printing um, as a tool, as a learning tool and um, educating people on the sustainability of it. So at the moment, I have one of my projects at the moment that I use as like fidget tools for my ADHD that are really calming. Um, but yes, I like to use it as a um, process to create objects to interact with, with people. And I've also started doing um, 3D printed jewellery with um, recycled bioplastics. Um, so that's been a really nice way of um, combining an art form with a wearable piece and also having functional, helpful um, objects as well. Okay, and, and do you work for yourself or do you work for an, another organisation? Uh, yeah, I work for myself, yes. Okay, that's great. And um, so, how did you get to where you are? You know, tell us a little bit about your education. What subjects um, did you study for? What qualifications um, uh, do you have? Yeah, I, I feel like my education journey was very different to a lot of people. It's not what I expected. Um, when I was at university, I was really struggling with it. I, I've got ADHD and dyslexia, but I wasn't diagnosed at the time. Um, and I was finding things really difficult and I was really embarrassed to kind of say. And I knew I liked 3D printing and making stuff but I wasn't very good at the outcomes or what was expected of me um but then I, I felt ill and needed surgery so I had a year out of education and then what I found in that time out was I was playing around with my 3D printing and I'd got a 3D printer for Christmas my dad had got one for 100 pounds from Aldi and I was like this is amazing um so I was just really playing around and not worrying about the outcome at that point it was a hobby um, and that really allowed me to kind of build up those skills and not worry about um, what it is that's going to be submitted and perfection and what the, the finishing of it is going to look like um, but yes um, then when I returned I was able to take those skills and actually start applying it to things that I realised I enjoy those um, how people play how people engage and through realising that actually I was really struggling with education and what is it that I was struggling with was processing this information that was given to me. I, I asked within my third year if I could get um, assessed for learning disabilities and I got my diagnosis and that led to developing the tubies as like communication tools as well as fidget tools. Um, so it was a really nice way of combining that experience with my year out and my hobby and passion of 3D printing together and playing with them both. What are the next steps really in your career? So I graduated, um, summer just gone, so I think it's been 11 months now that I've been working for myself. Um, I moved into Islington Mill and the Salford Makers and there I have um, three 3D printers and I'm just looking at getting more printers so that I can take them into schools and um, one thing I'm going to be doing this summer is going into um, RHS Bridgewater and with or other organisations to start learning about bees and um, creating bee houses from um, 3D printing bee houses and what we can think about in terms of um, solitary bees, what do they need, um, how actually we can use this bioplastics that's made of cornstarch and the kids absolutely love that this is almost what Doritos are made from and I'm like that's the same thing all this corn and I just love seeing people surprised with how it can be used and to benefit our environment as well. Okay. And um, so, so tell us a little bit about um, what, what you're doing in your freelance work. You know, tell us a little bit more about 2Bs, for example, because that's a really, looks like a really lovely product. You know, what sort of sparked that and, and, and what, what are they for? What, what are they used for? Yes, so these... I use them within workshops um, to help those initial um, 
interactions with people so I find that first conversation really really hard and keeping eye contact with people and knowing what to do in social situations so at the moment I'm looking at um, creating engagements that people can interact with 3D printed objects or um, I work with uh, another studio partner who uses um, digital manufacturing and laser cutting and CNC machines and we make massive contraptions with 3D printed and laser cut parts that people come and play with. Um, we're currently looking at building a big installation piece that resembles a 3D printer, but the people control the pulleys and the axes. Mm -hmm. So it's explaining the process of 3D printing, but you're playing it all together as almost a game. So we're hoping to take that around some festivals. Um, and I really like that with 3D printing, when I'm at the studio, I'll have an idea I'll say it one day and then I come in and I've made it the next day. Mm -hmm. And with my impulsiv Im impulsivity of the ADHD, I love that I have that control over what I can make very quickly mm -hmm. and using um, 3D modelling to be able to visualise it because, again, communication I find really difficult sometimes. But if I can model it and make it look realistic or 3D print it just so someone can see what I mean, I love mm -hmm. that control and that that tool of a communicator yeah yeah and and what are your sort of future aspirations do you have anything at the moment you just just want to get yourself established with what you're doing with the workshops and the and the products or, or do you have any sort of big sort of life goals that, that you have in I think I love I love having 3d printers they are like my children I name them they have birthdays I just love that they are they're so powerful and they've all got different um abilities or different like different types of printers can do different things and I like the idea of being able to have more and being able to have people witnessing it I, I don't have to explain it I think it's just really nice to have more options and be able to take them to schools and I really want to just keep um 3d printing the two beers that's something I'm trying to figure out at the moment but struggling with trying to print out the studio with temperature and I don't have mm -hmm. a chamber or anything mm -hmm. um, to help with temperature. Um, and then my dream would be is to have a huge box of two beers, a huge, huge box and have them in an open area and people just come and play and build huge sculptures and people make the tallest tower, they can make bridges. Um, ideally that is what I would love to do. in the future. It's a, it's a great goal um, and you're doing really well on your journey so far it's great that you've managed to develop these unique products it's really exciting I'm going to be really interested to see how, how you take that further over the coming years um, so just a couple of uh, sort of final questions to round up with is um, really um, we hopefully got lots of students uh, watching this video and learning about your experiences um, but what advice would you offer them if they're interested in, in pursuing a career that uses additive manufacturing or 3D printing what advice would you give to them? Yeah I think an another thing I'd experienced was um, I remember being told why would you use 3D printing what makes you different and it really scared me at first because I, I was like I don't know actually what I'm doing but I realized I'm using it as a tool I'm using it to help me I'm using it to play with I'm using it to make parts for contraptions and I think I, I, I overthought that a little bit and if you find that you use it in any of those ways or you use it to create mechanical parts that's that is great I didn't think I'd ever be um 3d printing jewelry never saw myself doing craft but I just love that you can combine craft and 3d printing where it's usually seen as very engineering and like these are the infills of the 3d printed parts but actually now the aesthetic of of the piece um so I think not being broadening your mind to what you can apply it to and if it helps you communicate which it really really does for me that is a huge thing. And also knowing that the material I used is 90% plus recycled plastic and it's all cornstarch and the materials I use are really, I can be very conscious of what um, I use and waste products. And over the summer, I'm going to be building a, a filament extruder. So I'm going to take all of my recycled um, plastics and then just extrude it again 
and make some more filament. So you, I would love to say to the person that said that to me about the sustainability of it and a communication tool for me. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for your time, Jamie. Um, Thank you for having me. I, I just realised there's something else I wanted to share with you, but I only oh just finished it because um, I, I haven't put it on my website yet. And I think these would be, so I've made these for 10 schools around Manchester at the moment. So they're inspired by the two videos. I just thought I'd show you a video from my from my phone, but they're, they're called like the, they're gender tools. So they're mm-hmm. the same kind of um, concept of like connectivity. And mm-hmm. then it's helping people communicate about gender and sexuality through um, different signs and different um, connective possibilities. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you can put them together and... Um, this is something that's really helped me as well with my sexuality and being able to explain that to um, friends and family and like if at school if someone's finding it really difficult to have those conversations they can take that to a teacher they can have they have that thing that they don't have to make eye contact they have this um, object yeah. to communicate through mm-hmm. and I would love to share that a lot more because I think it would be a really, really helpful tool in terms of having in the classroom and even fidgeting with that. It's a comfortable mm-hmm. thing that we should be able to talk about and even have as an object in our hands. I love it. I just love it. I love what you do. I, you're really inspiring, Jamie. And especially like, if you like only just recently had a diagnosis as well, uh, you know, and having to go through all of your sort of educate, basically the whole of your education without that diagnosis. I think it's it's tremendous that you 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 are where you are. So well done. Thank you so much, honestly. Thank you for having me. All right. No, thank you very much. It's been lovely speaking to you.